Okay, here's a quick run through of uh, some ways that I zero my machine. Um, there's a number of techniques out there that work equally well. I don't really um, claim to be an expert by any means, but uh, just thought I would share this information for anybody that's interested. The first thing I want to show you is um, what you need to look at when you're setting up your zeros on your machine. Um, I'm assuming that you're using Mach 3 like I am. Uh, the screen set is uh, not the default screen set. It's called uh, Mach 3 2010. It's a blue screen. It was designed um, by a user of Mach 3 that uh, allows it to uh, incorporate features as far as uh, probes and uh, offsets and so forth uh, built right into the software. So, uh, But what we're looking at right now are the uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates. I don't have an A axis or fourth axis, so that's not relevant here. Um, right now, they're not really set to anything specific. It's just uh, basically where the machine thinks it is right now, uh, but it's not that important. Uh, what we're really going to look at is how you set your machine up to find your zero point and then go back to that when you do a tool change or other uh, setup. So we'll look at that next. Right now I have the uh, router bit, which is a quarter inch uh, carbide bit, is set to the uh, left of the material as you're looking at it. The uh, XY axis goes um, X front and back as you see it here and Y to the right and to the left. And you'll see on the workpiece I've got clamped down there, I've got a couple of lines drawn that gives me a center point, approximately two inches from each edge. And so what we're gonna do is uh, set it up so that that tool is uh, right on that center point, ready to do your job. Um, you'll need controls for this. Uh, in Mach 3, there is a manual pulse generator mode that you can use or you can um, purchase and use a small numeric keypad like a, a USB type keypad and that can act as a kind of a pendant control or if you're lucky enough to get one you can also get a manual pulse generator um, that are made specifically for uh, Mach 3 and um, fortunately I've got one that's uh, hooked to my machine and we're just gonna see if we can get it out here where you can see kind of what it looks like and you see on the top is the uh, coordinates and then there's controls below that and then the actual wheel that controls the motion of the unit is uh, right about where my thumb is. So the first thing I want to do is uh, creep up on the y-axis side of the uh, work piece and that's the side closest to the bit and uh, what I want to do is, I'm, this is kind of a seat of your pants type setup. There's no uh, real super accuracy to it, but if you're doing a woodworking project that doesn't require that kind of tolerance, you know, this type of um, setup works just fine. So what I'm going to set it up to do is I'm going to go on the Y axis and I'm going to set it to the step mode and I'm just going to creep in on it and you can see it's moving in. And I'm just going to do this by eye. I'm going to get to the point where it just touches the side of the uh, workpiece. Okay, so that's touching. Here we see the y-axis has still got its arbitrary number in place. So what I want to do is I want to zero that axis. So if you look to the left of that number, which at this point is minus 3.3478, uh, is the Y button, and we're just going to click on that. And that uh, zeroes that axis. Okay, so here we have the bit just touching the workpiece on the uh, Y axis side of the workpiece, as we're going to call it and we want to move it over to center on the mark that's two inches to the right. Uh, we want to center on that so what we'll do is raise up the Z so we're going to do that right now just above the workpiece make sure we get enough clearance then we're going to go back to the Y axis and we're going to go into velocity mode and we're just going to move it over close to the two inch mark Okay, right and close. 
Now we're going to go back to step mode and we're going to we're going to step that till it's exactly 2 inches. That'll put us on the edge of the mark. As you're looking at it, the mark will be on the right edge of the bit. So I'm just creeping up on it here, almost there. And we're there. Two, two inches. I'm just gonna move that a little bit, see if we can get that to focus. You'll see that line is just on the edge. Well, we don't want the edge. What we want is the center. So we have to take that into account with the bit. The bit being one quarter of an inch in diameter, we have to go half of that, or an eighth of an inch, or in this case, 0.125 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jog it over again. I'm still in step mode until I get 2.125 plus or minus. Okay, I'm at 2.1258, which is close enough. So I'm going to consider that my Y0. So the next step is I need to zero my Y. So all I need to do again, if you notice, it says 2.1258. That was our reading off the uh, manual pulse generator. So we're just going to go ahead and zero that again. And now we're going to do the same thing with the x-axis. Okay, so now we have the x-axis ready to be set up. I've got it on the edge of the uh, workpiece. And we're going to basically do the same thing we did with the y-axis, only in this case, the x being front to back, I'm going back, so that's actually going to the negative x. So what I'll do is I'll start out you know, raising this up. Just enough to clear. Go back into velocity mode, and I'm going to go in the reverse. Reverse. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to get it close. And then we're going to go back into step mode. And we're going to dial it in so it's exactly two inches. Okay, there's it two inches. So I'm not going to show this, but I'm going to zero it so I know exactly where I'm at on the x axis. And then I'm going to go another eighth of an inch. That's 0.125. And that's in the reverse direction again. There's minus 1.125. Here you see the uh, x-axis and it's at the minus 0.125. That was after we lined it up with the line at two inches. I moved it another eight. So now we're ready to zero that. So we're just gonna zero the x. So right now the uh, work piece is directly under the uh, bit at the x and the y. And the last thing we need to do is set the z. Now, manually setting the Z without any sort of uh, probe or sensor or any sort of other type of device that gives you an accurate reading, the closest that you can get, and this is usually when you're doing woodworking again, you're not doing some precision metal work, is uh, you need to get that Z axis as close as you work as you can without the uh, bit um, colliding with the workpiece when you're trying to set the zero. So. Uh, the way I do it is I'll take a common piece of paper and I'll get a piece here in a second. So what you want to do is just get yourself a, like a common piece of office paper, copy machine paper, that sort of thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to create kind of what we call like an interference uh, fit between the workpiece and the, um, the bit. Now most standard 20 pound uh, roll paper is approximately four thousandths of an inch in height or thickness 
So that kind of gives you an idea of how close you can get to your work piece. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to put the piece of paper underneath the work. And then we're going to jog it down slowly. And as we're doing this, it's going to get to a point where it's going to start to bind the paper. And we can check that by moving it. See here it's free. You'll see it come down as it pushes against it. And what we want to do is move this as we're doing this. I'm doing this slow because I don't want to bind it up too quick. Right there it's caught. So I'm going to bring it up a couple just to see where I'm at. It's just touching, so I'm going to go back down about. Okay, right there. That's my spot. Just grazing the surface. So now I know I'm roughly four thousandths of an inch above the workpiece, so if I want to compensate, I can just add another four. And it's about that should be about right spot on. So here you can see the X, Y, and Z. I moved the X a little bit just to get it closer to the camera, so it's a little off, but that doesn't matter because it's already been zeroed. Uh, the Z, as you can see, it's about four thousandths of an inch um, below where it was before. Um, and but that we're at the zero point, so we need to zero that. We're going to do that now. So now I've actually zeroed all three axes, and uh, this comes into play when you want to uh, change your tool or you're setting up for a different part of the job, and you may have to uh, load another file to continue your work. Um, this will get you back on the zero point. Uh, the one thing that may change uh, during the course of your job is your z-axis. Uh, you should always try to reference that somewhere on your workpiece. It's not going to get cut away by the the bit. You know, it could, it could be it could be on the corner of the piece. It could be in the middle of the piece. But it just depends on how, what you're doing. But right now we're um, we're actually zeroed on all three, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to. Um, jog this out of position as if we're going to change the bid or do some other kind of uh, activity and then I can show you what happens when we get hit the go to zero. Okay as you can see I've moved the uh, gantry uh, forward and to the left just to get it off the workpiece. It's up a couple inches on the z-axis and um, all you really need to do to get it back to where you want it is to hit the go to Z button or go to zero button on your uh, screen and I'll show you that where that is real quick before I hit actually hit the button. Okay right where you can see the cursor it says go to Z. That's the button we're going to press when we want it to go back to the zero settings that we set up for your workpiece. So I'm just going to hit this button and we'll see what happens. Okay so here's the workpiece and the router to the left and what we want to do and hope to see is that when I hit that go to Z button you're going to see all three axes position themselves right over the, that cross with the Z just touching the workpiece. So let's see what happens. And there you go. It's touching right in the center and we're good to go. So if for some reason we need to do something and we need to move it, just get your trusty MPG out again, raise up your Z, move your X, wherever you need to go, we do the Y, and it's off axis again. All you need to do, hit that go to Z button. And there you go.